It's been almost 20 years since you yeah. were diagnosed with HIV, almost 20 years. Why did you decide to tell everybody? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I made the decision to tell anyone anything. It just so happened with me being in the hospital and sharing my HIV status to family and friends and that it spread like wildfire that wow. I had no choice but to control All the right. narrative. <laughs> now, if you ask me what I do it now, knowing what everything I've been through, I don't know if I say I would tell a soul, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, so was it a blabbermouth cousin a sister like you know the people closest to us are the ones that cut the deepest i promise you, you know what i'm gonna tell you this thank god social media was not out when i came out with my story and i'm gonna leave it at that okay now the fella that gave you hiv what was that conversation like well, I had called him while I was still in the hospital because I, I knew I had got it from him. But it's just kind of one of those things. It was not making sense, but no other story made sense either. But I called him and I let him know that I was positive. And uh, he immediately said he was sorry. And at the time I had always said, I don't know if he said he was sorry. He knew he had HIV. And he gave it to me or he was sorry that now he, someone else knew or, you know, that um, he gave it to someone. Did you well, ever clear that up? Did you ever find out like which that sorry was? Did he know? I, 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 yeah, I, I found out in August, 2020. <laughs> Um, and I and I and I say that because for so many years I referred to this man as Prince Charming, um, because he was a fairy tale guy for me. I was nineteen; he was twenty-one. Had his own place, on car, looked good, smelled good, like all these things. So I mean, I thought this was the guy I wanted to be with, you know. And when I told him that I was positive and he was sorry, he made it seem like, um. I'm trying to get this right because he made it seem as if when I told him I was positive that he was finding out that he was HIV positive with me and the stigma that I was already beginning to face not even a week being positive I understood his not wanting to tell people or not wanting to be around in a way I almost feel like I had to protect him you know wow. But I tried to tell people, you know, who this man was and what uh, he had done with all of, without saying his name. But, you know, they love to believe the man first anyway. <laughs> and no one believed me in that sense. So I struggled very early on in my diagnosis. And I did it alone, knowing that this person was out there and he was positive. But I did not think that he could handle it like I could. In fact, I knew he could. I couldn't get him to go to the doctor. I couldn't get him to take medication. I couldn't do any of these things. So y'all stayed together through this? No, we did not. However, I thought we would. I, th I, I, I thought we were going to stay together. <laughs> like, I, I thought I was still going to have my positive fairy tale. Like, yeah, it's still Disney. We just both HIV positive. But he didn't want to have anything to do with me because people knew about my HIV status. So he left. And for so what so happened in August 2020? Um, so it was the end of August and it was his sentencing date because he was due in court for infecting another woman with the virus. And it was only one woman who was able to come forward and she was still anonymous, but it was so many other women, at least 25, who, what? who did not want to say anything, who was still scared to be anonymous. And I came in being out of the statute of limitation and I was able to be, um, you know, uh, tell my testimony in the courtroom. But while I was there, I found out that there were people before me. Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. There were people before me. And that's what shocked me the most because this whole time I'm thinking we found out together and you 
play me just like you played them. And here it is almost 15, 16, 18 years later. And these women got the same story I got. I told him I was positive and he acted like it was his first time ever hearing the word. It was women who had heard about me and asked him about me and he still denied it. And when I was in that courtroom, I had forgave him so many years ago. When I was in that courtroom and I looked at his face, the way he was so dismissive towards me, he didn't even acknowledge me or anything. I knew in that moment, not only did he knew, he did it on purpose. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. So, <sighs> so he was convicted? He was. He's still in there. Okay. He was, he was, he, they gave, they gave him the max because like I said, it was so, and again, you know, we talked about a a, a little bit off air, the difference between Tennessee and New York City. Tennessee is so open, right? People come to New York City to be who they want to be. In the state of Tennessee, everyone may know you or know of you or know of your family members. It's very hard to be HIV positive in Tennessee. Not so much in New York City where there's 9 million people on top of each other. But when you got people spread out, it's not easy. People are fearful of losing jobs. People are fearful of someone um, um, harming family members, all these things and being judged that it was only one woman that came forward and she was still anonymous. Mm. And I'm going to keep it real because it's us on here. She was white and that's why them charges was brought against him. Mm. Oh, tried because I tried. Mm. I tried. Uh. Marvelin, Marvelin Brown, <laughs> Jesus. Um, What's up? Oof, this this book. Um, first of all, it is raw and real, and beyond HIV. You know this story. There are people walking around with viruses that may not force them to take pills every day because of relationships like this one um what's the relationship with your parents you write about your daddy being a daddy's girl and Mm -hmm. and how accepting was your family uh because again there's a stigma what relationships did you lose as a result of this this was not your fault but what relationships did you lose what relationships were revealed as a result talk about that I want to say like, it's definitely two sides to every story. Being so young and things changing for me, I would say none of my family turned their back on me. However, there was ignorance there and there was an education there, which caused me to feel a different type of way in different situations, as you would feel alone as you would feel no one understands you or no one gets you or no one's trying to comprehend. Like it's still to this day. Yeah. I'm marveling. And uh, you know, I do this and I do that, but I'm still HIV positive. Like I can't do all of that. Like, you know, you see me here, but you didn't see me this morning. I had a little bad reaction to my medication. You didn't see me trying to fight by being nauseous. Or if I say I'm tired, I'm tired. Like, Mm. I feel positive. I know I look good. I look just like you, but I'm still fighting a virus. And no, it's not, you know, a death sentence. I would say that in a way, because if I stop taking my medication right now, it surely would kill me. Mm. You know, I have to do so much, so much comes into, you know, just my HIV life. And then I got the other one, you know, the personal one. So that's something as well. So what is it like, has it been like to have relationships? You know, are there lo- loving relationships and can you have children? What is the I mean, status you for that? You can, you, can, you can definitely have children and live life. I know a lot of, you know, um, HIV positive women who have done it uh, successfully, you know, naturally and all these things without infecting their partner. But, you know, I say that with there's education and doctors and a lot more stuff behind there. But these things are possible. Now for me, it's a little different because I am public and I have a very unique name and I'm a Google search away from your whole family knowing everything. Uh, And that has played a part in dating for me in some ways. Like it may be an HIV positive guy and he positive, 
but nobody knows he's positive. So he don't want to date me. And, um, you know, uh, it, it, I, I, I've tried everything. Like, like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? That's me, not you. But it still raises questions about him. And so, you know, that's been a problem. Or then when you get someone who's who's negative, who you know, who who does not. I I would say uh, it hasn't stopped it. It's just it's definitely been challenging. I'm single, but I'm not single because I'm HIV positive. I'm single because I don't settle, and nobody has met my standards yet. And so then I will play. What what does dating look like? Um, are you on apps? Like and and when in the in the process of the date dating relationship do you let people know? I, I'm on I'm definitely on dating apps. <laughs> I'm more sure for, for certainly I've been on them. Um and you know, I meet people out or whatever. And I just I don't know, I kinda I kind of just go with the flow. When I was younger, it, it seemed like, I don't know if guys were just, because I'm 37 now, been positive since I was 19. In my 20s, the guys was a little bit more receptive. I don't know, now that they got older, I don't know if they're thinking about stuff, doing some stuff a little different or, or, or what. But it's like, if a guy takes me on a date and he finds out I'm positive after this date, I have wasted his time, his money, his, and I'm like, when was I supposed to tell you? Because I didn't have mm. to tell you anything. Mm. We're not we're not sexually active, you know. And sometimes, you know, I can be just a little petty, you know. I may start talking because I'm I'm definitely in the dating world. It doesn't mean I sleep around or anything like that. It just means I like dates and dinners. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um. So you know, <laughs> so I can give you situations. I can write a book on dating. But, um, you know, um, we could be, you know, out or on the phone and it's this thing that people think because I'm HIV positive, that means something like you did me a favor from talking to me. And that's not how that works. You know, it's, so- you know, this is, you know, again, stigma. Uh, we were talking about race and stuff before you came on Marvel and Brown and how propaganda and how we've been so indoctrinated into believing this about a group of people and believing that about a group of people hiv diabetes high blood pressure cancer like all of these things are things that people suffer through yet this virus and covid now covid right people have had covid what twice three times and that they're not carrying around the same it's the same kind of virus but it doesn't have the same stigma. And so, you know, it, it, to me, it's unfair that you, you know, you have to fight through a stigma when you are sick. You have to say, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's bizarre how we put things in categories that it really shouldn't be in. Luckily, I've, I've, I ain't going to say I learned how to, well, I'm going to say this. I have learned how to deal with the stigma and discrimination, but rejection from something that is not in my control um, has, has been a, a, a battle, you know, some, some days you can be good with it, but after like five rejections in a row, it, it messes with your psyche. It does. So, so how do you deal? What do we, we're here on wellness Wednesday, you know, what, what's your process? Marvel? Oh man, there's lots of different processes. Like I do whatever it takes to make me happy. It can be my favorite meal. I work on my mental health. Like I have a team of people from therapist to case manager, peer educator, I get it all, whatever I need, how I need it in, in whatever way. It'd be take a trip. It'd be whatever. Call an ex. It'd be whatever I need to do to handle that in that moment. What's massage. been one good, yeah, what, what's been one good I mean, thing? I mean, a massage would definitely be one of those, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of funny. One of my, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I don't like a lot of people touching me. I understand. I'm that way too. Marlon Brown is but, here. But, but I'm getting better. But I'm getting better with with the massages, and they're a little overpriced, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> well, you could get a subscription at Massage Envy, and that. Oh, okay. You know. <laughs> and you can go to the Tweena places. Like, there's a Tweena place right off of 28th Street and Park. Look for the Tweena places, and down in like Chinatown, Little mm-hmm. Italy, the Tweena places. You can get good massages. They'll walk on your back. 
and um, oh, you know, for like really? $50 for an hour, something like that, $50, $60 okay. an hour, something like that. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely I'm, doing more self-care things in that sense. Walk us through, um, and you've gotten Emmys and all kinds of awards for your heroism. You know, again, just a, a woman that gets up every day and lives. You're living your life. Um, Marvelyn Brown, well, looking back on your journey, what is one positive thing that has come out of this diagnosis? Me, my outlook on life, my, my self-love, my self-care, my self-worth. I mean, I, I get people mm. every day, like you're 37 single with no kids. What's wrong with you? And they would think it would be because I'm HIV positive. I don't live by what society standards say of me because society didn't care about me. Society stigmatized and discriminated against me for so long that I had to become my own person and create my own world that suited me. And with that, can't nobody stand me. That's sad. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, we in the same boat. Um, eight, eight, six, six, eight, zero, one, eight, two, five, five. Um, what, what is it that you want to do? Like, you know, I, I, you know, tomorrow's not promised any of us. Oh, we were just talking God. about Midwin Charles and, and Eric Bollard, who, uh, was riding his bike today and lost his life. You know, like, you don't know, you don't know. Right. So you oh. get up every day. What, no. what, what is it that you want to do with the time that you have on this earth? Marvin? You know, right now, I just want to be happy i've done so much um i've 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 i've, I've, I've traveled <laughs> every single bucket list item i had maybe i need to go create another one you know I, I being a mother was something that i always wanted to be but i understand that we can't plan that either um you know you can have goals with that situation but if that is not for you that's not for you um, I, I, I definitely have tried in the past and I have experienced several miscarriages. So when I say that, that's what I mean by that. You can try to plan that. You can put that on the vision board. But in reality, that kind of shouldn't be there because it's out of your control. Okay. But things that are in my control, like continually traveling, I visit 47 states. I need to hit 50. I've been to 54 countries. Maybe I need to go to like 90 or something. Like though anything to make me happy, that that's that's what it is for me. My overall mental health, because if I'm good there, I'm good everywhere. 